When he cut out, he called me right away, and we began to really live together for the first time. Though I was extremely fond of him, I, I knew that he was interested in meeting lots of other people, and occasionally they turned up to, in my bed when I wasn't expecting them. FBI Field Report. On January 21st, 1953, Rustin was arrested by the police department in Pasadena, California, as a suspected sexual pervert. He was charged with lewd vagrancy and sentenced to 60 days in the county jail. That was pretty fast news through the pacifist community that Bayard had been arrested in Pasadena. All the other arrests he'd had were on grounds of principle. But this was an arrest where he knew he was wrong. I don't mean morally wrong because it was a sexual encounter. I mean it was stupid to get arrested on the backseat of a car with two guys in a public place, and he knew this. Bad had gone down to Montgomery to give Martin Luther King invaluable advice about the mechanics of how to conduct a nonviolent campaign. So in terms of practical political agitation and organization, I had offered that. When I arrived in Montgomery, Dr. King had very limited notions about how nonviolent protests should be carried out. When I first got there, the leadership had Dr. King's home protected day and night by men not only with shotguns, but with pistols. What do you want? I'm here to see Dr. King. Nelson, who is it? Good evening, Mrs. King. Bayard Rustin. Bayard Rustin. Excuse me. Well, if Bayard Rustin is here, then I guess we've arrived. <laughs> Dr. King. I'm gonna be blunt. You're straying from the principles of nonviolence. In what way? You're the leader of a nonviolent movement. And yet you have guns in your home and these armed guards outside. Let me ask you something, Mr. Rustin. Would you risk your family for a tactic? Nonviolence is not a tactic. Would you risk your family? Nonviolence is an ideology. I have it's an obligation to way protect of life. my family and it's defend religion. my religion. Well, the guns don't make me feel any safer. Bard was to him like an older brother. Martin Luther King was 25 years old. <laughs> and he didn't have the history and the experience that Bayard shared with him. Bayard was somebody that could talk with him on his own intellectual level and help him think through the political and social and moral dilemmas that he was facing. Adam Clayton Powell didn't want blacks picketing the Democratic Convention. In fact, he went so far as to warn King that if King did not withdraw his support from that demonstration, he would go to the press and say there was a sexual affair going on between me and King. Martin was so terrified by this threat that he decided he would get rid of me. I now bring to you the executive director of the March on Washington, the man who organized this whole thing, Mr. Bayard Rustin. The first demand is... Well, the concept is this, basically. The whole black nation has to be put together as a black army. And we're going to walk on this nation we're going to walk on this racist power structure and we're going to say to the whole damn government, stick them up, we come for what's ours. It is much too easy to take a position which just removes the relevancy of integration and equally to take a position 
which simply says both political parties stink. Asians are going to have to select the one which stinks least. That is the nature of politics. Now, I want to touch then on the problem that Mr. Rustin raises about the lesser of two evils. It's about time that this country tells the political leaders that we do not vote for evil men, period. And that for me to beg to get into that community is for me to dehumanize myself. And I shall not do that. I am a human being. I am black. I am equal. This country is racist from top to bottom, from right to left. Right. And for black people to become a part of that is for them to become, in fact, anti-black and to hate themselves. Black power. And before I'd be a slave. 25, 30 years ago, the barometer of human rights in the United States were black people. That is no longer true. The barometer for judging the character of people in regard to human rights is now those who consider themselves uh, gay, homosexual, lesbian. I grew up in the aftermath of Dr. Martin Luther King. I joined the New York branch of SCLC the year he died. I was 12 years old. I became the youth director of Operation Breadbasket in New York under Reverend Jackson at 13. A few years later, because of some differences in the organization, Reverend Jackson left and therefore I left. And I decided to form my own youth group in New York. And I went to a man who gave me the money to start a national youth movement named Bayard Rustin. Yes. And Bayard Rustin uh, gave me the funds to start a national youth movement and kept me going in civil rights. And what turns you on about me? I'm turned on by uh, brothers who are uh, intelligent, who love themselves, where there's a, where there's a um, spark between us. Somebody in good shape, somebody healthy. Only brothers? Predominantly. It's my preference. When in bed, it's like they're like a, a man and then a woman. <laughs> well, people always ask that, but you, you ask it more explicitly. It's just like the last question. <laughs> it's quite explicit to what turns me on. <laughs> Ain't your business. Um, <laughs> <laughs> So I'm here to bring the, the perspective of a black man who's the same gender, same gender loving black man. And these brothers on my side are part of the organization as well. And there's many of us out in the audience. As we plan Africans charged genocide because an Uhuru member in Philly was trying to get some signatures and y'all kicked him out of the event. You um, pro-black, what is it, pro-straight black pride bull pushed him out of the event, right? Have you ever Anyways, my man King, my boyfriend, he's sick right now, you know, so I'm about to go take care of him. Something Garvey would love because Garvey love unity and love us taking care of our brothers and sisters, okay? He got a little call. I got to take care of him. I think I think I personally think same that time, you can you can accept you don't have to say that you're going to promote it and you're okay with it, which is another sentence, but not we're not gonna accept it. Against we're against it. I can say you are against it. Okay, we're not going to accept it. We're not going to accept anybody who accepts it. What's the, what are you trying to get them to accept exactly? Well, homosexuality. Not, no, not necessarily just saying, it doesn't just say accepting homosexuality. Not just saying. accepting homosexuality. No, no, no. So accepting I'm, homosexuality and what else? No, 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 that's not what I'm saying. Okay, what are you saying? What I'm saying is that accepting the, the, full, the full system, 
the full, the full everything that's happened to everybody. That's, and that's, what, what, what specific thing do you want? You said acceptance, and this is a simple question. Right. We so don't get to Wait a minute. The crack dealer, because you have to understand. Who in here that accept that crack dealers home. in your community and think that it's right? No. So wait a minute. Wait that's minute. not what I'm saying. You need to chill out before I. I, mean, okay. I need to chill out. I'm asking a simple question, right? Because we've got to see how this thing works. Who in here accepted as acceptable to sell crack in the black community? Wait a minute. Who accepted as being acceptable to sell crack to black people? Raise your hand, please. Uh, who said that it's unacceptable to sell crack to white people? Please raise your hand. Okay. All right. So she said those of us the same way we accept crack dealers. Do we accept? Wait a minute. Stop. Straight black crack. Do we accept crack dealers in our community? No, no sir. Are we going to accept homosexuality in our community? No, sir. Are we going to accept pedophiles in our community? No, sir. So your interests here are no longer uh, useful, sister. So what do you think? I'm here as a Here we go, please. Okay. Here we go. 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 When we say justice or else, um, it's really important and it really resonates with us as Black Lives Matter. We've been in the streets. We have a philosophy that it, as long as they assault, occupy, brutalize, murder our folks, they're never going to be comfortable where they are. So we believe in disrupting the system. So our or else is what we've been doing. What we started doing is having conversations because Black Lives Matter also is very adamant that all black lives matter. And so what that means is for us, the black, queer, and trans community is hugely important. Black women are hugely important. We are a womanist black nationalist organization. Um, and so we had some kind of questions about where the Nation of Islam stood on those issues. And we had courageous conversations under the banner of operational unity about what it means to queer and trans folks for us to get down with the nation. And those were sometimes difficult conversations to have, but they really got to the core of what it is. For black people to be free, we have to be united. May I say to my LGBTQ family, let me tell you something. Those of us who are students of Elijah Muhammad, we're in love with our people. We don't ask you what your sexual preference is. We love you. We're not your judges. We want to work together to free our people completely. So to my family, this is my family. You'll never find me or us condemning you for what has become of us in our sojourn. Because all the holy ones who will point to a gay brother or sister are fornicators, adulterers, freaks, and everything else. So who of us can throw a stone at the next one? None of us. We're not being recruited to join the Nation of Islam. What we are being recruited to do is to join together and struggle for freedom and justice that liberates all black people. What queer mean to you? <laughs> queer is, to me is an umbrella term. Uh, that incorporates folks who uh, are outside of the heterosexual norm and the what we call heteronormativity, which is a big word for uh, relationships. Marriage is just between a man and a woman. It's the patriarchal family as we understand it. Um, what's important to us in Black Lives Matter is that we are elevating and cultivating the leadership of folks who have not been included in the conversation. That includes black trans women, um, so to us, right, we're, we're really trying to queer our movement. We know even in our tradition and our legacy of black liberation um, that queer and trans uh, folks have been in the leadership, uh, however, have had to kind of cut pieces of themselves off because it wasn't acceptable. Baird Rustin being an incredible example of that. Audre Lorde being an incredible example of that, right? Um, we want to create a different kind of movement culture. We think it's important, we think we need it, and we don't think that we can survive without it. 
So I hear that and I think, fantastic. The more the better. Feeling so good in here. You know, I'm feeling like I think Rebuna might be a place for a straight black pride chapter. What y'all think? Oh, oh, okay, okay. I did come to the right place. I think I came to the right place.